yes the last formula we have derived is delta y by delta x that is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x and as i told you we call this as average change in y with respect to x and also i told you in graph if y is function of x is given let us say the graph arbitrarily like this and uh, this value is delta x this is change in x this is change in y delta y so from graph if we if you ask me to calculate average change in y with respect to x what i do is i will just join those two points with a straight line and uh, the anti clockwise angle made by this straight line is theta with x axis and tan theta gives you slope that we know so tan theta is equal to delta y by delta x but delta y by delta x is average change in y with respect to x that means slope of straight line is equal to tan theta that is equal to delta y by delta x if you want me to calculate this i will calculate this but not slope i just to calculate the slope of line joining these two points from graph what i am telling from graph so that i can calculate average change in y with respect to x <coughs> but then average change sometimes it is very important to understand the instantaneous change of y with respect to x what is the difference between average change and instantaneous change let us go for a general example that generally we uh, discuss we have started uh, here and we are going on bus let me take uh, you have started uh, at hyderabad by morning 6 am and now your bus is going towards vanaparthi let me take and here will be getting jet charla and somewhere you will be getting bisnapalli now whenever you talk about average speed average speed is equal to distance traveled or path length by time taken suppose here you are at 8:15 am so from here to here what is the average speed in between hyderabad and jetcharla it takes almost 2 hours 15 minutes that means 135 minutes time t equal to 135 minutes and the distance between this hyderabad and jetcharla approximately 80 kilometers so distance is equal to 80 kilometers so what is the average speed 80 by 135 kilometer per minute or you can express this in terms of uh, in hours so you will be getting average speed in kilometer per hour but we are not uh, interested on this value in most of the cases we just ask with what speed our bus is moving at that particular instant yes somebody calls you so what do you do with what speed the bus is moving so you will uh, see in speedometer yes the uh, pointer is on some 70 so 70 kmph 
speed. At that instant only, after next second, it may be 75 kmph or even 69 kmph. So, at particular instant, whenever you see the uh, speedometer, so whatever, wherever the pointer points, so that speed gives you instantaneous speed at that particular instant. To calculate that, you did not go for all these things. That means uh, most of the cases, the instantaneous speed is very important. That means sometimes it goes at 80 kmph, next to 40 kmph, sometimes it may be 0 or 40 or 70, like this. The speed of the bus is going on changing. So those speeds are instantaneous speeds. Instant in a speed may be 0 or maybe 80 or maybe 40 or whatever that may be. But average speed is total distance by total time. Average speed, if you come to know, you can't have any idea about instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed gives information at a particular instant. From instant to instant, how it is going to change. So in most of the cases, than the average values, we have to need, we have to have we have to get the knowledge of instantaneous speeds. So here also, this is average change with respect to x, but most of the cases we need to know instantaneous change of y with respect to x. That means here at particular instant, so exactly 7 o'clock, 1 minute at that instant, that instant means that instant. So what is the value of speed? So at that instant means there is no duration of time. At particular instant. That means if you go for duration of time is delta t, delta t is almost equal to 0. At that instant, we need the value. That is called instantaneous value. Here also, we have to go for delta x tends to 0. Delta x is equal to 0. Then at particular instant, we can talk about y value. But if delta x is 0, delta y also 0, because there is no change in x, there is no change in y, then it is very difficult for us to talk about change of y with respect to x. But at the same time, this delta x should not be considerable, very negligible value we are going to uh, take to satisfy these conditions. That means we are reducing the delta x value. We are reducing the delta x values. So let us reduce the delta x value to go for instantaneous change. Y axis, x axis, this is y x graph. And uh, these are the two points. This value is delta x, this value is delta y. So, I am reducing delta x. If I reduce delta x, this point moves here. So, suppose if delta x is up to here only, so point will be here. So, this will be delta y. So, delta y also changes when delta x changes. When delta x is going on changing and decreasing and tending to 0, then what happens? This point almost coincides with this point. Let me take this point is A, this point is B, but we are reducing this delta x gradually this delta y also gradually decreases, decreases, decreases and this point A and B almost coincide, almost coincide. So in that case, this delta y by delta x can be written as delta y by delta x under what limit? It is delta x is tending to 0, we can write it as, we can write it as dy by dx. So, dy by dx is called instantaneous change of y with respect to x. Now, dy by dx gives you what? And again, so when delta x is going on decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and finally not equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, mathematically it is not possible to calculate. Because there is no change in x, there is no change in y. So, 
uh, it is ridiculous to talk about uh, change of y with respect to x when, the, when there is no changes. So here delta x tending to 0 means very less. This is delta y tending to 0 means this value we can call, we can take it as dx, this value is dy. So dy by dx again dy by dx. So dy is opposite edge, dx is adjacent edge. So dy by dx is slope of line joining A and B, but A almost coincide with B. Can you identify the two points to calculate the slope? It is very difficult because if it is 2, if it is 3, this B will be 2.000001. This B may be 3 point some 0, 0, 0, 0, some 4. So it is very difficult for us to identify those two points on the graph. That's why what I'm doing, already I told you, the straight line slope does not change. You can take small length straight line or big length straight line, whatever that may be. You can take this here, small length straight line or big length straight line. So slope of uh, straight line does not change means instead of taking this dx and this dy I will consider one point here and one point here and I will calculate the slope of the line but this line at A or B is called tangent this line at point A or B because A almost coincide with B so we are calculating the slope of this tangent drawn to the graph at that particular point so that we are calculating dy by dx that means rate of change of y with respect to x change of y with respect to x at that instant or graphically we can calculate as a slope of tangent this is change of y instantaneous change of y instantaneous change of y with respect to x or graphically how to calculate slope of tangent drawn to the graph at that point that's all so to calculate the slope of this tangent you can take any two points here or here these two points you can take and this point and this point and no need of uh, ending points you can extend it and uh, uh, whichever be the values that you feel comfortable you can pick any two points then you calculate the slope of that tangent and say that it is dy by dx but dy by dx is instantaneous change of y with respect to x again i am telling from mathematically, mathematically how to calculate? This is the formula for calculation of delta y by delta x. For calculation of dy by dx, so here limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x. Mathematically we can calculate uh, average change of y with respect to x by this formula. Mathematically, we can calculate instantaneous change of y with respect to x by using this formula. But if you want to calculate this average change of y with respect to x from the yx graph, again I am telling between which points you want to calculate the average change of y with respect to x. Identify those two points, join those two points with a straight line and calculate the slope of that straight line that will give you tan theta value that will give you average change of y with respect to x but here to calculate instantaneous value one single point we are having not two points if we are having two points here so we have taken those two points as ending points for this straight line then we have calculated the slope but here at particular point at particular instant we have to calculate instantaneous change of y with respect to x so single point you are having at that point you draw the straight line so you call that as a tangent drawn to the graph at that particular instant and uh, next you select any two points no need of ending points because you can extend it to any length 
you can select these two points or these two points or these two points or this point and this point. Next, you calculate the slope of that tangent drawn to the graph at that particular instant so that you can calculate change of y with respect to x at that particular point at that particular point. This is the main difference between average change and instantaneous change.